Hi everyone, I hope everyone's doing well. And today I'm gonna to show you how to customize the OM-1 so it works the way that you want it to. The OM-1 is a very customizable camera. You know, we have so many features in the camera and we may have a group of settings or features that we like to use for specific types of photography. So maybe I'm doing landscapes, I'll have a group of settings that I like to use for that. Or maybe I'm doing my birds in flight and I like a group of settings for that. And then also maybe I like to do some macro photography and that may be a different group of settings like focus bracketing. So what we can do is once we set up the camera for a specific group of settings like landscape, I can save all of those settings into what they call a custom mode. And we can access those custom modes directly on the mode dial on the camera. As you see here, C1, 2, 3, and 4. So we can save four custom modes. Not only can you do that, but you can also set up your own custom menu that they call My Menu, which will give you access to settings that you use the most. And if that weren't enough, you can also save all of those custom settings onto your cell phone. And not only can you save the original four settings, you can save another group of four settings or another group of four settings. I'm sure there's some limit, but you can save virtually as many settings as you want to your cell phone, and you can also name them anything you want. So I'll show you that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up three groups of settings and they're not going to be too dissimilar from my last video on best settings for beginners. So it may look familiar to you or just maybe a refresher. But my first group of settings are going to be basically for my general photography and photo walks along with some video settings. And I'm going to save those into C1. And then I'm going to set up another group of settings that I like to use for my birds and flight photography and save those into C2. And then I'm going to set up a third group of settings, but I'm going to put the camera into movie mode and save these settings onto my phone because you cannot save specific movie settings like shutter speed and aperture and things in a C1, 2, 3, or 4 or custom mode, but you can save them onto your phone as well as I'm going to be saving some my menu settings into my phone as well. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just put the camera into the photo mode that I use for my general photography, which is aperture priority. Now I'm going to go into the camera menu and I'm just going to do a full reset so that we can all be on the same page. And that's kind of buried here on page six of the wrench menu reset, initialize all settings, say yes. So now the camera is back to the factory default and I can start making changes. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just go into the super control panel and make a slight change here on my uh, natural profile. And that's only going to affect the JPEGs. Uh, single point autofocus is fine, which reminds me I need to change this from small point to single point. And then I'm going to use silent shutter. I'm going to set my dual memory card slots so that I have a backup. So I'm saving the both cards at the same time. Then go back into the super control panel and change card slot number one to be RAWs, card slot number two to be uh, large super fine JPEGs. 4K 68 bit is fine, SIS auto, all this is fine. Let me adjust my white balance so to keep warm colors off. And uh, I'm going to lower my aperture to the lowest aperture setting that this lens is capable of, which in this case is 2.8 my exposure comp back to zero. I must have bumped the dial somehow. I'm also going to change one of my button settings here, specifically the red record button on the camera to actually start recording a movie when I push it. And then in the movie menu, uh, let's see, I'm going to change the video codec is fine. Let's see, I think it's in the next menu. Picture mode, yeah, this looks good. Records video using the same settings. So that way, if I choose uh, monochrome, it'll record in monochrome, etc. Now, let me make a note about the aperture setting. I set it to the lowest setting available for this lens, which is f2.8. If I happen to put on my 25 millimeter prime, which can go down to f1.8, it's not going to go to 1.8 when I put that lens on. It's going to default back to 2.8 meaning the setting that I used before. And if I put a lens on, say, like my 300 millimeter f4, which has a maximum aperture of f4, it's going to go to f4. And then one more example would be if I had set the aperture to f5.6. All three lenses are capable of that. So what it's going to do is use f5.6, no matter which of those three lenses I put on. 
So just be conscious of that when you set the aperture with the intent to save it to a custom setting. All right, now let's save this into custom setting one. So I'll go back into the menu. Uh, so it's menu one, page one, line one, custom mode. Click OK. And I'm going to save it to C1. So I click OK again. And I'm going to do a sign and click OK. Then I'm going to click OK one more time to set it. And then we'll go back. And now you can see that C1 says set, but C2, C3 are still empty. Now there were some other settings there in the custom menu that I'll come back to later. Now let's very quickly set up my birds and flight settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into shutter priority mode. And then uh, go into my AF target points and change this to all. And then I'm going to go to single AF. I'm going to change this to continuous AF. And I'm going to change this to sequential high speed SH2. Let me adjust my shutter speed, as you can see on the bottom left, to one two thousandth of a second. That's where I usually start. I also like to change my EV step here to just full stops for my shutter priority. So now when I rotate the dial, it goes very quickly in full stops. And that's good enough for like birds and flight photography. All right, then one last thing I'd like to do is let's go to the AF menu and change the AF to be on to subject detection for birds. And actually, I also like to change the CAF sensitivity for birds and flight to plus two. And we're done. All right, now let's go into the menu and save all of this to custom mode C2. So you can see it's empty now. I'll click OK. I'm going to assign and set. And we're done. And now you can see C1 and C2 are now set. So now that I have everything saved to C1 and C2, even when I turn the camera off and turn it back on, I can quickly get to all those settings that I set up for my general photography and start shooting by just putting the camera into C1. And if I want to just go into my birds and flight settings, I can just go to C2. Let's say I take the picture of the bird and I want to go back to regular photography. I can quickly go back to C1. Now, before I move into the third group of settings for movie mode, I need to clarify that any settings I make when I'm in movie mode on the camera, cannot be saved to C1, 2, 3, or 4. They are separate. The same thing is true for any items that I add to the My Menus. None of those can get saved specifically to C1, 2, 3, or 4. But I can save them together. The movie settings that I set up in movie mode and the My Menu items that I added, I can save those together along with the settings in C1 and C2 as a group onto the phone. All right, so let's go ahead and put the camera into movie mode. So as you can see in the bottom left, we're in movie mode, but the movie mode is in program mode, so it's basically full auto. But let's say I want to record in the highest quality possible that this camera is capable of. So I'm going to go into the menu, and I'm going to go over to movie mode, and I'm going to change this to H.265. Let's do this Cinema 4K. 24p is fine. Let's put this into manual mode. And we don't need that. Oops. Uh, I'm going to turn off keep warm colors. And let's see, is anything else here? I think, yep, that's good. I'm fine with auto ISO. Image stabilizer, I'm going to change to MIS2. Usually I'm on a gimbal and the digital stabilizer can get a little wonky sometimes. Uh, image stabilization level, I'm going to turn to plus one. And then sound recording settings. Uh, I don't need the built-in mic, so I'm just going to turn this to zero or minus ten. And my mic I know is very hot, my external mic, so I'm going to turn that down to minus five. And that's just something I know. And all of this is fine, these settings. And headphone, I'm going to turn down to zero or one, the lowest setting. I've, I've heard this helps reduce noise in the internal camera, but um, 
So it's just best practice. I don't know as a for a fact. And then turn the center marker on. All right. And then let's go to the autofocus menu because for some reason they put the movie autofocus in this menu. CAF, uh, I like to focus manually when I'm in movie mode. And CF speed, and this doesn't matter because we're in manual focus. All right, now let's uh, rotate our shutter speed down to 1148. So we got the 180 uh, shutter angle, and we'll do f2.8. And then one last thing I do sometimes is I go down here to the button menu from the super control panel. And because I'm manually focusing, I change the AF on button to my zebras. So I can toggle my zebras on and off by just pushing the AF button. See, there's a little bit there. And I can toggle it off. So I didn't want to get into it here about the kind of movie settings that you can save in the C1, 2, 3, and 4. Because it's very limited. But I do have a whole separate video that goes into the fine print about the differences between movie modes when you're in C1, 2, 3, and 4 versus when you're actually in the movie mode on the mode dial. So I recommend you watch that if you want the fine print. But for now, let's go ahead and move on to the My Menu settings. Now, the idea behind My Menu is to be able to take settings from anywhere else in the camera menu and bring it over to a custom menu that you can access quickly. So now you don't have to dig through all the different layers of the menu system to find the setting you're looking for. It'll be right there in the My Menu. So let's go ahead and set up a couple items. All right, now I've put the camera back in the aperture priority and let's go into the menu and let's add some things. So uh, I've already added custom mode. I do use that in my menu and I think the next one will be down here. I'm going to add sequential shooting. Click the uh, record button, add it to my menu one. I also like to add silent settings to my menu one. And then... And now let's move on to autofocus and let's go to the movie autofocus modes. And I'm going to add this to my menu two. And then I'm going to move over to Kodak and I'm going to add the Kodak to my menu two, the re resolution to my menu two, mode to my menu two, and picture mode. And now let's go to, uh, yeah, let's, okay, here in the wrench, I like to add card format to menu one. So in my menu one, I have, you know, things that are kind of buried in there that I like to change time to time. And then in my menu two, I have the video settings that I like to change time to time. Okay, and then while we're in here, let me show you one more thing. Uh, I can rearrange the order of these items if I want. So let's say I want to move picture mode up to the top. I can just push the record button. This little pop-up menu comes up and I can remove it, remove the entire page, but let's just rearrange. So I'm going to click OK. I'm just going to move this to the top and click OK. And now that's been moved to the top. Now, last but not least, what I want to happen when I push the menu button is I want it to go directly to my menu one rather than to the where it left off last. So let's just set that and then we're going to save everything to the phone. Now, ironically, that setting is probably the hardest one to find. I, I had to look it up, but it's here in the cog menu, page two, menu cursor settings. God knows why. Click OK. Menu start position. Click OK. The default setting is recently, so let's go to change it so it opens to my menu tab. Click OK. And I'm going to click OK one more time to be sure. All right, so if I push the My Menu button right now, it's going to My Menu. However, if I go somewhere else, and let's say I just go there, and I tap the shutter button to exit out instead, which I do a lot. If I push the Menu button again, it goes back to where I left off rather than the My Menu. So what I have to do I have to push my menu or I have to push the menu button to exit out. And then if I go back in, it goes to my menu. So watch, watch one more time. I'm going to push the menu button. And I'm going to go 
I don't know, anywhere else, right? How about let's say I go there. And instead of pushing the menu button, I tap the shutter button, right? To, to get out. If I push the menu button now, it goes back to the most recent uh, item rather than my menu. So what I have to do is instead of tapping the shutter button, I push the menu button to get out. And then to go back in, it goes right back to my menu. Now, I don't know if that's a glitch or if that's by design, but I couldn't find anything in the user manual that explained this behavior. So if you've been pushing the menu button and you're not going directly to my menu, it's probably because you didn't exit out of the menu system pushing the menu button. Um, so that'll be a little workaround until it's either fixed or documented somehow. All right, so I have the OI Share app open on my Android phone. And I'm just going to go into the camera super control panel, go into the Wi-Fi, and do device connection. And then I'm going to go into my cog menu here, Wi-Fi setting. And I'm going to wait for the uh, OM1 to show up. I'm going to go ahead and connect to that. I'm going to go back to the app. I'm going to go back another page just to make sure that I'm connected to the OM1, which I am. So now I can just go to the cog menu again, camera management, camera settings, and then right here, the first line item is save settings from camera. So I'll do that. And I'm going to save everything. I can check or uncheck things here if I want, like so, but I'm going to save everything. So we're going to do save settings from camera, and we're going to do save together like that. And it's pretty quick. All right. So now it's saved here as the top line item. And if I select it, I can just go here and rename it. And we'll just call this a demo, like so. But you can name it anything you want. So we're done. And I'll just click the back button. And actually, there's actually a place down here for notes and things too. Whatever you want to write, I guess. <laughs> Anyhow, we're all set. And you can see on these, I added icons and things as well. Uh, I forget how I did that, but I did it on my keyboard. And then if we ever want to load these settings back into the camera, all we do is select it. And then click this icon. And now it's loading the camera setting. So it's loading it back into the camera. And that's it. Okay, there's one thing I forgot to talk about, and that is in the custom menu. We click on custom mode, click set. We've been using the assign to save all of our settings, but there's also this setting here called recall. And I would ignore this, but basically the idea is that if I'm in aperture priority mode or shutter priority mode, if I click yes here, it's gonna overwrite all the settings that I did while I was in that mode uh, without having to turn the dial to C1. However, the problem is, and I'll show you, let's say I'm in aperture priority mode, which that's what I saved in C1. If I change the aperture to F5.6, and I go into the menu, custom mode, C1, recall, yes, have the shutter button, you can see it changed it back to F2.8. Now, if I had anything else in the settings different, it would bring them all back to whatever was in C1. But if I put the camera into shutter priority mode, right? And I, I go into the menu, I do custom mode, C1, recall, and then say yes. And I go back out. The camera's still in shutter priority. So it's not going to override the mode dial. The other thing we have in here, in custom mode, C1, 
we have save settings or reset. This applies whenever we have the camera mode dial on C1. And if I make any changes uh, while I'm on the mode dial in C1, it, they'll, they'll get reset as soon as I go out of C1 and come back to C1. It'll go back to the original settings. Versus if I have it in hold, if I change any settings, they're going to be saved into C1. So just a quick demo of that. Let's, let's, let's put it on reset. That's the default mode. And I'm going to put this back in. I'm going to turn the mode dial to C1. So let's say I change the aperture f5.6 and I add in plus one exposure comp, just for example. Um, and I take a few pictures. If I take the camera out of C1, let's say I go to you know, manual mode, do some shooting, then go back to C1. You'll see that it's back to f2.8 and zero EV or exposure comp. However, if I set the custom mode to hold, and now if I make any changes, let's say I put it f5.6 and I add plus one exposure comp, take a couple pictures, whatever. If I go out of C1 into, you know, shutter priority, then I go back to C1. You can see that it saved the f5.6 and the plus one exposure comp. So I hope that all made sense. And I think you can see how powerful it is to be able to save all of your custom settings into the camera and then saving groups of settings into your phone. Like I have, you know, a group of settings that I use for my pay jobs, a group of settings that I use for birds in flight. And I'm definitely going to be adding more because this camera can do so many things and it's useful to have, you know, custom settings for each specific type of photography and once you get used to it, it's very fast. I can change settings very quickly in the camera, save them to my custom setting. And if I can't remember what it was before, because I don't like what I changed, I can always recall it off of my phone. Uh, so it's really, a, really a great feature and I, I hope you use it. Uh, but with that said, uh, I appreciate you watching. If you like these kind of videos, hit the like button. And I have some more tips and tricks coming and tutorials. So uh, subscribe so you don't miss those. And if you can, maybe buy me a coffee or two. It makes making these videos a lot easier for me. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.